After his accident, doctors said he would never walk again, so he became a boxing world champion. Based on a true story, by the way, it's a tense atmosphere at the Mayweather boxing match press conference. Yeah, the moneymaker's senior, but he's not the hero of today's story. Vinny is, but he's getting late for some reason. His team says Vinny took the wrong hotel. In reality, he's trying to lose weight extra fast, driving a bike. Silly, here's my 100% effective method. Eat a two-week-old Jibale. Worked for me. I dropped about five pounds in the toilet. Anyway, Vinny comes up mocking Mayweather and his team. That's Italian confidence. He weighs 140 pounds even, right on the money. Feeling he's on a lucky spree, Vinny hits the casino. Yes, his fight is tomorrow, but it's already tomorrow, so who cares? Vinny wins some cash and celebrates in a room with his girlfriend. You only live once. Sleeping is for babies. Apparently, Mayweather is built differently, as he smashes the face of an ignorant pizza eater. Hey, no racism. He indeed ate a pizza yesterday. It becomes evident that Vinny won't win this one on points, so he has to knock Mayweather down. So who will win? A disciplined cold Mayweather or a hot-headed psycho Vinny? You know what they say in a casino when you go all in and lose? Better luck next time, sir. Well, it's not your night, Vinny. Let's see if you make it to the hospital, boy. The doc says Vinny has ketosis, meaning those expired burgers caused some trouble. Yeah, the prime energy drink didn't exist back then. Vinny is back home at his household. He watches his fight on a tape, analyzing it, and hears an interview where his manager says Vinny should probably quit fighting. Bummer. No more hustling casinos? Vinny and his angry pops named Angelo pay a visit to their manager, Lou, for an angry talk. Lou breaks the truth. Kid, you have a heart, but nothing more. Even if you win, you land in a hospital every time. Maybe you should consider another sport. Esports, for example. It's the only thing my puny body could do. But Vinny is only good at two things in this life. The hustle and bustle. So he begs for another fight. Then he goes to New York to the legendary Kevin Rooney, who trained the legendary Mike Tyson, the legend. Kevin was fired by Mike for his drinking problems, while Vinny lost three fights in a row. That's what I call a winning team. Kevin understands their destiny. The only reason Lou brought them together is that so they can finish their careers together. Well, Vinny has other plans. So Vinny goes to sparring and shocks his coach with his speed. But his weight is a huge problem, apparently. Vinny's pizza diet doesn't work so well. So Kevin suggests Vinny should get to a bigger class. Actually, jump two classes up. That's a huge risk, but oh well. He doesn't have much to lose anyway. So Vinny begins training. Vinny gets his coach and girlfriend to a family dinner in Providence, where they'll stay for some time until they find the next fight. And it's found. A French guy named Deli. And guess what? It's a title fight. Both Vinny and Angelo are thrilled, but not Kevin. He knows Deli is a huge deal. I mean, this guy tried all the hot one sauces and only cried twice. This guy will definitely destroy Vinny. Kevin confronts Lou, who uses Vinny as a stepping stone for Deli. But Lou can't do anything. You've asked for a fight. Here you go. Enjoy your french fries. Vinny bugs, but maybe too hard. I mean, who goes on training when the fight is tomorrow? Only the lunatic Vinny. Kevin doesn't like his approach. Rest is a major part of the training process, and that's why I take a 30-minute nap after every match in CSGO that I lose. Yeah, I basically sleep all day. It's match day. Vinny fights in his homeland. That's his advantage. Delhi is a champion. That's his. The fight is tense. For Vinny. For Delhi, it's a stroll on Paris promenade for the first few rounds. Then, Kevin reminds Vinny that boxing is not only about punching, but also about moving. Kinda weird that he forgot that. Anyway, Vinny begins to dominate the rest of the match and knocks out poor French frog eater. Time to celebrate in a club. I do that after every game I win in CSGO. Yeah, I've never been to a club. Time to discuss the next match. It's in super middleweight, so Vinny has to lose some weight again. Kevin doesn't like the idea. Vinny doesn't really care. He's a boxer, not a thinker. He goes on a ride with his homie when boom, car accident. Mike Tyson hits hard, but the car on a counter strip hits even harder. Vinny lands in a hospital, sleeping like a baby. After a few days, he wakes up, making his parents extremely happy. But wait before celebrating. Vinny's neck is severely damaged. Although Vinny is positive he's fine and can't wait for the next fight, the doc says he's not sure Vinny can ever walk again. Bummer. Esports don't sound so silly now, do they? Vinny has two options. A risky halo surgery, after which Vinny has to live the most careful life ever for six months because any neck movement will get him paralyzed, or a neck fusion, a safer procedure that will guarantee Vinny will be able to walk again, and nothing more. As you can guess, Vinny takes the risk. After a hard operation, Vinny officially becomes Professor Xavier. He returns home where he gets a badass bed with a remote, and a solid reason to never go outside. Perfect. Don't know why he's so dramatic about it, but Vinny is in denial mode. His, uh, girlfriend is freaked out with his streamer setup. No clapping for you. So he goes to a club for some cheap love, but it doesn't make him happy. Time passes by and Vinny gets used to being Stephen Hawking's, but instead of studying some black holes, Vinny prefers chips and TV. Kevin pays a visit and says there's a place that makes Hawaiian pizza just across the street, so Vinny goes on a crusade. When they arrive, it's a surprise birthday party. Everyone is happy for Vinny that he's still alive, but not Vinny. Relatable. Especially after Lou asking him to give up his title. Can a guy eat some birthday cake and peace? Anyways, Lou gives Vinny a check and leaves him with a doubt. Then Kevin with his annoying esports career. Dota isn't even cool anymore. Don't you guys understand that the only thing this man knows how to do is punch people in the face? The point is, all the pleasures in his life are now impossible with Metal Gear solidly holding his head in place. Sad that no one believes he will ever fight again. Finney goes in a casino. Nothing heals your soul better than losing all your money in gambling. Just ask all those Twitch streamers. After a few hours, Vinny is broke as a rat, and a dealer gives him a ride home, while Kevin intentionally gets arrested for driving under the influence. If there's a rock bottom, they just hit it. At home, Vinny puts his gloves in a box. He tries to accept his fate, but darn it, man 
man loves buffing up. Even a broken neck can't stop him, so he goes for some bench press. Insanely bad idea. First, he tries it with some weight, then without it. He pulls the bar up for one time. A small step for a person, but a huge step for a person with a broken neck. Kevin comes over. He's not in jail, which is already a good day for him, but Vinny makes it worse, asking Kev to start training him again. Training what? But Vinny is deadly serious. Risking a pathetic X-Men life is nothing for him, especially after those last movies. But Kevin still has a life, the one without a driving license, but with a happy drinking habit. So Vinny mocks Kev during a card game, making Kev angry, who starts drinking even more. The same night, Vinny wakes up at 3.30 and goes downstairs for his regular life-risking training routine. He finds Kev. Poor fella got too playful with the burning water, but he decided it's better to help Vinny kill himself rather than watching from the side. At the very least, Vinny's head will jiggle like a clown's head from a music box, which is hilarious. And so, the training begins. Vinny hits the weights like a monster. Now tell me why you skipped the gym today. Kev and Vinny have a wonderful time together, making the rest of the family wonder what the hell they are doing in the basement together. Well, someone has to be the boss of the gym. Unfortunately, one night Angelo spots the boys enjoying time together and throws Kevin out of the house. After a few months, it's time to remove the halo. Vinny never did substances in his life, so he has to do it without sedatives. Imagine someone unscrewing bolts out of your skull without painkillers. Yep, that's pretty painful. But life is painful, and Vinny knows that for sure. Slowly, Vinny gets back to regular gym sessions. Pretty soon, he's back to his normal life. Unfortunately, no one wants to fight him. Too afraid to kill the optimistic Vela. Kevin arranges a press conference to show the world Vinny in his perfect shape. But even in training, no one wants to have a sparring session with Vinny. Finally, a kid agrees to light sparring, but he doesn't throw punches at him. Vinny gets mad and taunts him, and gets punched in the face straight away. He takes it like a man. He's ready for a fight. Lou sees the press conference on TV and thinks the same. Plus, he sees a great opportunity to sell this fight for a big penny. Meanwhile, Vinny talks with his pops who refuses to stand in his corner with him. Too tired of seeing Vinny get hurt. Come on, Angelo. The worst thing to happen is your son dying. Lou pays a visit to Vinny and brings up the great news. The fight is scheduled. It's a title match for the super middleweight against Roberto Durant. What's even better? It's a $1.6 million paycheck. The biggest in his career. Whoa, that's like one-tenth of the money KSI earned clapping Logan Paul's cheeks. But times have obviously changed. Of course, Vinny agrees. And it's match day. Roberto Duran, 93 wins, 64 knockouts, four-time world champion. Well, I'd say $1.6 million is probably worth wearing that halo again, but only if Vinny makes it out of the ring after 12 long rounds. It might not take too long. Vinny goes down in the first round but refuses to give up. The man struggles, but his heart is solid stone, just like Duran's fists. And the match continues. Vinny eats the punches but tanks it like a man. A man with a broken neck and no brains. But things get dramatic in the sixth round. Pops gets his heart beating up worse than his son's face, and he begs Kevin to call it off. But Kev refuses. He reminds Vinny how he started from the basement with no strength to pull up his weenie. And now he's here, fighting the world champion. It works like a charm, and Vinny beats the hell out of Duran until the 12th round. And now we're in the final one. All in, just like Vinny loves it. With a destroyed face, Vinny goes into the final round. Things are pretty tough. Vinny is extremely tired, but so is Durant. At this moment, they're just eating punches. Unfortunately, no one got knocked down, so it's up for the judges to decide who won this one. And the winner is two points ahead. The world super middleweight champion? It's your boy Vinny. Can you believe it? After doctors say he doesn't have a chance to walk again, Vinny becomes the world champion. Based on a true story, by the way. Moral of the story? Just be yourself.